Hello everyone, welcome and thanks for watching the Market Report. We air every Tuesday on the Cointelegraph Markets and Research YouTube channel. Unfortunately, my co-hosts Joe Hall and Sam Borgi won't be able to make today. But don't worry, let's cover the most pressing topics of the week. On our first news, we'll cover CFTC regulators case against Binance and CZ. The Cointelegraph news was written by Derek Anderson and directly relates the $1,000 Bitcoin price correction that took place on Monday with the event. So for those unfamiliar, the CFTC handles commodities in the US, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. Their main case is built around Binance violating laws by serving US customers. We're talking about Binance International not Binance US in this case. And there are clear examples of how management and the KYC Know Your Client areas were fully aware and even incentivized US entities to bypass restrictions by faking IP addresses. So the new start by breaking Binance and CZ sued by CFTC over US regulatory violations, the cryptocurrency exchange and its founder, CZ, have allegedly violated trading and derivatives rules. So it's not only Binance, the group, but CZ as an individual. The United States CFTC against Binance, according to a Bloomberg report, the suit was filed in the US District Court of the Northern District of Illinois. Binance failed to meet its regulatory obligations by not properly registering with the derivatives regulator. But there's more. In addition to the CFTC, Binance has been under investigation by the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, and federal prosecutors, who've, who have examined the exchange adherence to anti-money laundering rules. So besides the issue of allowing and incentivizing US clients to bypass the sanctions and use their platform, there's the issue of offering derivatives contracts, such as futures, the, the perpetual contracts, besides using multiple accounts directly or indirectly controlled by CZ to trade against clients. That's not something that would be entirely illegal. It just had just needed to be disclosed and authorized by clients. So what the regulators are saying is that US entities, Americans or companies based in the US have been trading derivatives contracts at Binance and have been using Binance Exchange to access uh, uh, assets that cryptocurrencies that are not considered secured. So outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I think they also mentioned that Litecoin can be considered a security, but Binance is facilitating and allowing those US to trade derivatives and securities contracts on their platform. So the price of Bitcoin has plummeted since the announcement, falling from 27.8 to 26.7 in an hour and 15 minutes. So a thousand dollar drop caused by the news. Well, I'm not versed in the legal issues, but it doesn't seem out of the ordinary. They've seen much larger cases against exchanges such as BitMEX and Arthur Hayes, and besides a multi-million dollar fine and maybe a couple of months of house arrest, the exchange has been kept up and running. Yes, one can argue that BitMEX market share plummeted after the fine, but that was happening before the event. Uh, operationally, nothing changed at BitMEX. The clients did not have to wait months until they assets were available for withdrawal, uh, nothing operationally changed because of the fine, because of the case that CFTC, SEC and the regulators built against BitMEX. Already understood that a similar case is going to happen against Binance. Yes, maybe a lot of US clients that were using offshore entities to trade at Binance International will be no longer able to do that. So the liquidity will drop, the volume will drop, uh, maybe they will lose some clients, but in the end, nothing operation changes. There's no risk of having your assets seized 
because the, the exchange is going to be shut down. Clients are not pricing this risk. A mere thousand dollar correction, three and a half percent for Bitcoin. It's nothing. It's really nothing. So clients are believing that Binance is going to get out of this without significantly affecting their operations. There's an, another important piece of information. As for the Binance futures, it's open interest. So the positions that players have in the Bitcoin futures markets, a third of that, so 33% stands at Binance, the second largest competitor, which is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, owns less than 20% of that market. So Binance is huge. If there were a risk, if investor perceived that, well, there's a, I don't know, 5%, 10% risk that we're going to have to exit all Binance markets at once, or the derivatives markets will be closed for shutdown for a couple of months, they would be forced to close their positions. Besides the news, besides the, the three and a half percent correction, there is nothing out of the ordinary on Bitcoin derivatives markets, which is a good sign. At least it indicates that professional traders, those whales, market makers are not worried, at least not at the present moment. Now on to the next article written by Stephen Kate. It covers the Bitcoin hash rate, which is the measure of uh, how many miners are securing the Bitcoin network right now. So the Bitcoin hash rate spikes as analysts say miners are coming back online. Analysts are speculating that the Bitcoin hash rate has seen a significant spike recently as miners come back online to reap the rewards of the Bitcoin price hike. So the hash rate spiked to all-time highs near 400 tera hashes per second on March 33. And in a March 24, March 26 post, Sam Walters, a research analyst at Bitcoin Financial Service provider River Financial, speculated that the spike in hash rate is connected to unused mining inventory coming online, new facilities going online, and entrepreneurs finding cheap sources of mining. So how does the Bitcoin mining works? It's not like you can go to a shop at eBay or Amazon or whatever and order. I want uh, 200 Bitcoin miners, ASIC miners. That's not how it works. There's only two or three producers. They're all based, mostly based in China because of production costs, because it's use a lot of CPU, the, the chips from computers for that. So, and you, most of that, uh, most of the period in 2000, from 2017 to 2019, then back in 2021 and 2022, you had to back order. It's not that they have it ready available for sale. You had to pay in advance some entry fee, wait two or three months for the productions, then pay the entire stuff, have it shipped to your country, clear it through customs. So the entire process from the first time where, when, where you place the order until you get the, the machines, it takes three or four months at least. They don't work with inventories. Two reasons for that. First of all, the technology changes really fast. So if they're sitting on a huge pile of inventory and a new technology, a better ship is produced, then all this, that inventory is no longer good. It's not that you can mine with equipment for, from four years ago or from two technologies before. It doesn't work like that because your miner efficiency will be very low. Even if you have cheap energy cost, if your miner, if, if your miner is from two technologies ago, you're not going to be profitable. So those ASIC producers who build the miners are not sitting on inventories. And even if they are, like there was a bear market for one and a half year, they're not going to be sitting there and not using those machines. They're going to put them to work, even if it's on a shared environment, even if they're going to find a, a joint venture to pay for the energy cost, but sitting inventory in minor machines do not exist. So what the analyst is saying that there was a big inventory that has been stuck due to the Bitcoin uh, uh, price 
uh, depletion that we saw during the past 18 months. So it was not uh, profitable for those companies, even, even if it was the miner itself or a joint venture, it was not profitable for them to mine because of the price below $20,000. And as soon as Bitcoin price recovered, I don't know, $20,000, $22,000, I don't know what's the, their price level, but that inventory that was unused came back online. And there's another uh, uh, cause of the increased hash rate, which the article covers here below. Walter says that hydro motors, hydro models are starting to get into the market with 250 plus terahash per second per machine, which adds tremendous hash rate. So as I said before, the new models, which is the hydro models, I are like five or four times more powerful than the previous generation. But that was really expensive. Those machines were costing like, I don't know, eight, nine thousand dollars each last year. So it was not profitable for the miner. I think it was even more expensive than that. But the point is, if you bought those machines or if it was sitting with the ASIC producer, it was not profitable to mine during as below as Bitcoin was below twenty thousand dollars. So as Bitcoin price went up, you don't need new orders to make those those machines go online. They were sitting in inventories either from the Bitcoin producer or a JV that mines for the, those companies or even buyers that bought when Bitcoin was trading at thirty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars, and crashed. So. Those buyers were sitting on machines that were not profitable. So you do not mine if your cost basis is higher than your profit margin. It makes no sense. Nobody's going to do that. So it's very quick when the price rises and there's inventory sitting there, the hash rate rises really fast. So speaking to Cointelegraph, Nazar Khan from Bitcoin mining company TerraWolf explained the company is currently maximizing the hash rate of all its rigs and has recently brought more online at its new Nautilus crypto mine facility. So they've added 80 megawatts capacity and 50 at Nautilus. The recent price movement is an indication of the long-term value of the ability to expand a lot at low cost energy sites. So that's another point. A global recession for miners is an excellent thing because they have less competition for energy use. So they can get energy or cheap. So even if Bitcoin stayed at $20,000, if there's less competition for energy and the prices go down, we've seen, for instance, natural prices in Europe exploded back in 2022. But over the past nine months, as the recession aggravated or they found other sources of oil, it doesn't matter, but natural gas price plummeted in Europe. So if you were a miner and dependent on that kind of energy, so if you were located in Europe, probably you sh have shut down your rigs over the past 12 months. But what we've seen over the past three or four months, it's a drastic change. So the energy price went down. So there's mi the miners are now going at full capacity. According to Ken, while some have speculated that the lower price forced miners to shut down their rigs and wait for the Bitcoin price to improve, TerraWolf was able to continue mining Bitcoin at lower price levels because there are lower costs from efficient mining fleets. So it all depends on how efficient your miner equipment is, if it's a brand new equipment, and your energy cost. However, regardless of the reason for the spike, can says TerraWolf is not expecting the, the network hash rate continue to increase through the first half of the year, respective, irrespective of the Bitcoin price. So a lot of people say that when hash rate goes up, necessarily Bitcoin price follows. There's no direct relationship to that for two reasons. The first, as I've explained, there's a lag from the moment you order machines to the moment you have them shipped and ready for running. So it's at least four months lag for those. And the second reason is that if the price of the energy goes down, 
for example, if there is a recession, then miners get a cheaper price for their contracts. So they instantly became more efficient, irregardless of the Bitcoin price change. So those metrics are not directly related, but if the miners are resuming to turn on their machines, it means that at least for the next couple of months, they're, true, they're confident that price will remain above $20,000 or their operational costs. So I don't think there's a direct relationship to those, but uh, having a lower hash rate, a drop in the hash rate, certainly is detrimental for Bitcoin because there's less miners involved, so there's less security involved in, in the network. And the trend, the long term, should be always up for the hash rate because the computer chips get more efficient. Okay, guys, that was the market report for March 28th. Thanks for watching with us. And don't forget to visit Markets Pro, the professional Cointelegraph alerts platform. We've got some proprietary indicators that have been consistently paid off. Whether the market is going up or down, it doesn't matter. There's lots of alerts and information that you can trade, improve your trade and get profit with Markets Pro. And there's a 20% discount on the link that you can follow on the comments. So log in to Markets Pro, enjoy the 20% discount, and see you next week.